Welcome to the ministry of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell. And now, here's Happy Caldwell. Hello and welcome to our Sunday broadcast. What moved God to send Jesus to die on the cross that we might be saved? That's the question I ask in today's message on what have you done with love? God loved us so much, He didn't want anyone to perish. And so He sent His Son, Jesus. That means when you're born again, you have the love of God on the inside of you. And we are always to be perfected in love. That's today's program. But before we get into God's Word, here's Jeannie to minister to you in song, a powerful song. Get ready to receive as she sings, A Perfect Heart. All I could think to say was, get it out of the street. In fact, that was the last thing I remember saying. The next thing I remember was being put into an ambulance on a stretcher. I had absolutely no fear, for I felt God's presence. The doctors wanted to put three rods in my back to support my vertebrae column, but I chose not to have the surgery. I knew in my heart that God would supernaturally take care of me. 
Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness is a book about Jeannie Caldwell's real-life encounters with God. She shares them with you in the hope that your faith and trust in a loving Heavenly Father will increase. To order the book, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, call 800-264-2525 or visit our website at vtntv.com. And now, here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. So hopefully it, it stays on uh, this session. <laughs> John 3.16 and John 17 are the two scriptures that we want to read first. Very familiar passage of scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. What moved God to send Jesus to die on the cross for us that we might be saved? Love. He so loved the world. Now there's two references to the word world. Um, one has to do with the, uh, the cosmos. Uh, the other has to do with uh, a system. And you'll see in the epistles, the Bible says, love not the world. But here it says that God so loved the world. So there has to be a difference in these Greek words in what they are referring to. And there, there is a difference. Uh, in, in the epistles where it says, love not the world, it's talking about the world system. It's talking about the fallen nature of the world system. It's talking about all of the things that are in the world. And he says, you're not supposed to love those things, the system. But here in John 3, 16, he's, if I can paraphrase it, he's talking about people. God so loved the people. He, loved, he so loved the masses. He so loved the, the creation that he was not willing that any should perish but that all should have everlasting life. So God so loved the world. He was so moved by love. And of course, in 1 John, it tells us that God is love, 1 John 4. So love is what moves God. God is love. He doesn't have love. He is love. His nature is love. He, by the Holy Spirit, through Jesus' substitutionary sacrifice on Calvary, is in you. God in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Romans tells us, and we'll read it in a minute, that the love of God was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So the, the first thing that I want you to, to get a revelation of is you have the love of God on the inside of you. Amen. Now the struggle we have as human beings and, and being perfected in love is we're not quite perfect yet in love. So we uh, condemn ourselves because we miss the mark so many times. Uh, we say things we shouldn't say. We do things we shouldn't do. There's actions and words and and then you have to ask God to forgive you. Then you have to apologize. You have to repent. And so you're, you're constantly warring within yourself. I know the love of God is in me. I know God loves me. I love him. But I keep getting off and making these mistakes. And so you sometimes just give up. You just quit. Say, oh, well, God knows me and he puts up with me and doesn't make any difference what I do. And not so. We're to always strive for perfection. In Matthew's gospel, the fifth chapter, and we'll read that, it says that we are to be perfect as our Father in heaven is perfect. It doesn't mean that we're going to be without flaw or without idiosyncrasies or without uh, missing the mark every once in a while as humankind. It means, and you'll see this, we are to be perfected and perfect in our love walk. What have you done with the love that was shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost? It's not an option. We are commanded to love. When they asked Jesus, Master, what's the great commandment in the law? They were trying to entrap him. And he says, the first 
is to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul. The second is like unto it, you're to love your neighbor as yourself. Now, to some people, it's easier to love God than it is to love their neighbor. But the scripture says, how can you love God? How can you say you love God whom you've not seen and not love your neighbor whom you have seen? Some people say, well, that's the, that's the problem. That's <laughs> now go to John 17. And while you're turning there, remember that Jesus was moved with compassion. When the leper came to him, the Bible says he was moved with compassion. Amen. I've ministered, my wife and I have both ministered in two leper colonies. One in the United States in Carville, Louisiana, and once in, one in Manila, Philippines. And when you stand, they don't call them leper colonies. They call them treatment for Henson's disease. And they pretty well eradicated it with, with medicine. But when you see uh, a person who has leprosy, and we prayed for the, the Catholic nuns take care of these people. And when you see people come up in a healing line after we'd ministered the word to them and shared with them, and they come up for prayer, and they're looking at you. Some of them have no eyes in their sockets. Some of them have no ears, no hair, no nose. Some of them lift up their little hands and there's no fingers. They're just nubs. You can't help but be moved by compassion. You say, Pastor, did you all lay hands on those people? Yes. <laughs> John G. Lake, missionary to Africa, medical missionary helped bury people that had died of the bubonic plague. When the medical missionaries came over to help and assist, they asked him, what have you done to protect yourself from contacting the disease? He said, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. <laughs> they didn't know what that was. <laughs> So he said, let me show you. Get your microscope. Now, they didn't have sophisticated instruments like we have today. This is the turn of the century. He went over and scraped some of the foam out of a corpse's mouth, put it in his hand, which meant sure death, contacting the disease. He said, now put your microphone on that in my hand. I mean, your microscope in, in, <laughs> on that in my hand. And when they did, they literally saw the germs die as they touched his hand. And they said, what is that? He said, that's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. When you're not afraid, when you're perfected in love, 1 John 4 says, there is no fear in love. So you can lay hands on people that have diseases, leprosy, whatever, and and. Medical science has verified this, that if there's no fear, no apprehension, no dread of contacting the disease, the pores in your skin close and the germs can't get in there. But if you're fearful and afraid, the pores open. You have the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But you have to walk in love. Love is what makes your faith work. Brother Hagin used to use this as an example. He said one time he was in a meeting. He was sitting in the hotel, sitting on the bed one day because he just didn't feel right. He, he was very seldom ever sick uh, after God healed him of heart problems and uh, he never took an aspirin and you know, never was sick in his life. And all of a sudden he just started feeling bad. So he knew that there was something not right. So he asked the Lord, he said, Lord, I know this is not you. And I know this is not right and there's no reason for me to be sick. So he said, what's, what's wrong here? Where have I missed it? And the Lord said, you have taken a step out of love. Wow. Your faith doesn't work when you're not walking in love. So he immediately judged himself, corrected himself, and he said, he began to feel better immediately. So love is a spirit, it's a powerful, it's the nature of God, and it's on the inside of you. John 17, verse 24. 
Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you've given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known you, but I've known you, and these have known you that you've sent me. And I have declared unto them your name and will declare it that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them and I in them. Now you believe Jesus gets his prayers answered? Of course. Right now, today, as we speak, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, ever living to make intercession for you. And here he says, Father, I declare that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them. <laughs> Think of that. That is so powerful. God so loved that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus said, the love that you love me with will be in them, in you. Now, my brother and sister, that's powerful. Go back to John 15. And let's look at verse 9. We are to continue in that love. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, even, if I've kept, even as I've kept my Father's commandments, and abide in His love. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you, that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, I want to say this about the commandment to love. If, if you're not cautious, you will love because you're commanded to. We are commanded to. It is a commandment. We're to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, love our neighbor as ourselves. We'll be held responsible for how we keep, exercise, and fulfill that commandment. But what happens sometimes if you only understand and get the revelation of loving because it's a commandment then it becomes a legalism issue it becomes i'm I, I i'm i love you because i have to well that's not what he's talking about here i don't like you but i have to love you how, how would you how would you wives feel if you knew that's why your husband loved you you don't want that do you Come on, here's your chance. You don't, you, he, he might be sitting right beside you, you know. Or husbands, you want to know your wife loves you because you're just lovable. Not because she has to. So what happens, I, I want you to see this metamorphosis, if you please. Yes, we have a commandment to love. But I don't want my love to be mechanical. I don't want it to be for fear of what's going to happen if I don't. I don't want it to be a, a legalism issue. I want it to be like God. I want it to be like the nature and the spirit of God. I want it to be like Jesus was moved with compassion. I want the love of God to flow through me. It's shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, it was an amazing thing. I, I went to the altar and, and I asked uh, the Holy Spirit to fill me overflowing. He did. It was just whoosh. And I began to speak in other tongues. And I felt another dimension of the Spirit of God that I had never experienced before. And it was the dimension of the love of God. My wife was on one side of me and my mother-in-law was on the other. And, and you know it's the love of God when you love your mother-in-law. <laughs> she was a dear saint. I loved her dearly. But there was another lady standing on the other side of her. 
She was about three, four hundred pounds. You could, I couldn't get my hand all the way around her, but I grabbed her and I told her I loved her. And I thought, I don't even know this lady. <laughs> what was that? That was the love of God. In our early days of our ministry, we were traveling. We were down south Louisiana. And we traveled on a little 72 Dodge van. And we're driving down the road one day. It's just me and my wife and son and I, our family, we traveled uh, for several years like that. And I saw in this little restaurant, fresh chicken and sausage gumbo today. Wow. Put on the brakes, backed up, went in there to get some Cajun gumbo. The lady that waited on us, the waitress, she was so scarred in her appearance. Her face was dark. Her eyes were, had circles on them. Her mouth drooped. She had scars on her face. And the Holy Spirit witnessed to me that she had scars on the inside. And I, I, can, I can still feel it today. I could hardly enjoy my gumbo for knowing that she was hurting. And all of this was by the Holy Ghost. And so he spoke to me and he said, when you go to pay your ticket, I want you to tell her that I still love her. Oh man, I couldn't. We got up to the counter and I paid the ticket and I said, ma'am, I, I, I need to tell you something. She looked at me. I said, the Lord just spoke to my heart and said to tell you, he still loves you. Man, her countenance changed. A little tear came down her cheek. That's the love of God. Ministering to someone who's hurting and using you to do it. It's not natural love. Because the Bible says, if you love someone that loves you, you haven't done anything. It's when you love those that are unlovely. It's when you love those that are, that are hurting and sick and shipwrecked and, and, and mean and ugly and you know, vicious. When you love those, you know it's the love of God. And, and, I, and I'm not picking on you, husbands and wives, but when, because I've counseled so many of these situations, when wives that are abused by their husbands, I, I counseled one wife, year, one woman years ago, and she was so beat down, she was, just, she was just numb. She didn't care about living and dying. She didn't care about marriage or her family or kids, nothing, because her husband had so controlled her and beat her down, not physically, but verbally, to the pack. Uh, to the fact that she was just passive. But yet she still loved her husband. You know, there's a lot of domestic abuse that takes, takes place that, you, you know, you feel sorry for the people and, you, and you, you, you want to arrest the perpetrator, the abuser, and sometimes it's the women beating up on the men too, you know. It goes both ways. But it's hard. Police will even tell you they hate to have to make a domestic disturbance call because they don't know. They, the wives and husbands may be beating up on each other and the police knocks on the door and says, is there trouble? And they both say, no, this is our business. Stay out of it. Okay. <laughs> it's hard to minister to somebody like that. Husbands and wives, they both love each other, but sometimes it's a kind of a sick love. It's not normal. It's not godly. It's not biblical. But there's so many people hurting in our world today. All of the problems of the entire culture, all the problems that we're having domestically, internationally, uh, nation against na nation, ethnicity against ethnicity, all of those problems could be resolved if we were perfected in love. Well, there's only one group of people that are held responsible for walking in love, and that's you. Now, I'm not talking about being a doormat and letting people walk over you. I'm talking about being perfected in the love of God. Stay tuned next week for the continuation of this message. I trust that that message on what have you done with love will minister to you. Stay tuned. Next time, we'll do part two, and you'll get the whole message. You know, we receive prayer requests and praise reports from our viewers. And a viewer recently wrote in and requested prayer. My good friend and sister in the Lord is in great need of prayer. 
Her husband was in a motorcycle accident three years ago, has a brain injury, and is in a nursing home. She has a five-year-old son that desperately needs his father. And my friend is at her wit's end and losing faith. Please lift her up, her husband and her son, to our Lord. I am praying for a true miracle. Would you join with me and let's pray for this sister. You might be experiencing similar situations. Father, I pray for the anointing of God to touch this man, to raise him up, to heal him, and to reunite him with his family. And I pray for the peace and strength of God, the joy of the Lord, to be with his wife and son. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we also have praise reports. A partner recently shared a praise report with us. Doctors had diagnosed uh, her friend with lung cancer. She could barely breathe. Our partner and other intercessors from her church prayed for her. She just had a PET scan which shows no cancer. Hallelujah. Isn't that great? God's in the healing business. He loves people. And we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report you want to share with me, email it to me. Happy Caldwell at vtntv.com. You can also call the 1 800 number, 1 800 264 2525, and send me your prayer request or your praise support. Now, I want you to watch this product offer as this is a brand new book that I've just written. It's just been released by Harrison House, and I am so thrilled about it. I think it's the best book I've ever written, and uh, I read it myself after it came out, and I was blessed. So I want you to have it. Watch this. The book is called The Heart of a Pastor. Do you feel a call from God to be a pastor? The calling of a pastor is the most demanding of the five-fold ministry gifts, but it is also one of the most rewarding. Pastor Happy Caldwell's brand new book, The Heart of a Pastor, shares over 30 years of his practical experiences, mistakes, and successes. The principles found in this book are ones that Pastor Caldwell has taken and applied from God's Word. If you want to answer the call to be a pastor and be joyful while doing so, then you need to get this book, just $16.99. To order your very own The Heart of a Pastor, you may log on to vtntv.com or call one 800 264 2525. Thank you so much for joining us for today's program. Be sure and get your copy of The Heart of a Pastor and be sure to join Jeannie and me next week, same time, same station. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. You can watch today's show online. Simply log on to vtntv.com and click Happy Caldwell. If you'd like to order today's broadcast on DVD, you may call 1-800-264-2525 and ask for the offer number on the screen. To contact this ministry, you may write to Happy Caldwell at P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221. You may also call us at 501-223-2525.